Hi there, and welcome to Design Tab. My name is Montague Monroe, and today in this tutorial we will be covering creating large background websites, as well as slideshow background websites. These design trends have been popular for a while now, and I believe they can be a powerful asset to any prospective web designer's toolkit. The main theory behind this type of website design is to minimize content only to what's needed, and impress the audience with a large hero image. Instead of this hero image being a picture on the site itself, we will make it into the website's background. These web designs are best used for a website that makes heavy use of imagery, and if executed correctly, the results can be quite impressive. Alright, let's kick off this tutorial by going to our sites folder and create a new folder called Big BG. So let's open up our terminal and make a new directory called Big BG. And then let's cd into that directory now. Excellent. Um, inside this folder we're going to want to open up our default text editor. Now that we have our folder open on our text editor, we're going to want to make two files and one more folder. We want a file called index.html. Let's make sure we're in the correct folder, yes. We're going to want another file called um, style.scss. Um, if you haven't watched our tutorial on using SAS, then I suggest you watch it to gain a solid understanding of SCSS files and how to use them. If you do not want to use SAS, you can use CSS instead. Alright. And we're also going to want a folder called JS to hold our JavaScript library. Okay then. Now we are going to want to put some cut and paste HTML into the index file and create a heading tag just to put something inside it like for instance title of the page so we can see it. I'm going to use a snippet for mine but there is many different HTML boilerplates you can find and templates on the internet and just copy and paste in. Alright then, there we go, and we'll create our h1 tag right here. This is the main page heading. Perfect. Now while we're here, we might as well open this up in our browser so we can have a quick look. Okay, there we are. Okay, next up, we want to open up our browser and go to a website which are, is called is srobin.com slash jQuery plugins slash backstretch. This website offers a free jQuery plugin that allows us to calculate the size of the viewer's screen, use an image, and size it to become the background. And this is the website right here. You can see this is the URL, and it will be included in the About section. Now in order to download the library, what you're going to have to do is click the download backstretch now and then after that we're going to want to take the JS folder and move it into, our, sorry, take the JS library, the JavaScript file downloaded and move it into our JS folder so we can use it. Alright, so I already have mine downloaded but once you've downloaded yours, just go and find it mine is in jQuery plugins jQuery.backstretch.min.js we just want to copy that go to our sites into our big BG website into our JS folder and paste it in there that's perfect now we're going to want to link it to our index page first of all while we're here we should link to the style sheet so we'll go oh, link and then we want to put in the style.css save it now that we're here if you are using sass at this point you should open up your terminal and type in sass double dash watch style.scss to style.css 
and this will begin watching our file and creating our CSS file. You can see it's made it right here. Alright, now we're going to want to add our script. Uh, we'll do this right before the end of the body, and we'll do it above the Google Analytics. Now, what we want to do is go uh, script, and then source, and we want to go js slash, and then we'll open up our folder and get it, jquery.back stretch dot min dot js and we'll save that and that should have linked in our new js folder alright <clears throat> once we have done this we need to create an images folder and inside it we're going to put our new background image so first things first we'll go new folder images and inside of it we're going to find ourselves an image and put it in there I am going to um, go to my pictures and I'm going to use mm, this picture of a tree in a field right here. So we'll copy it and put it into our images folder. There we go. Perfect. Now once we have our image in there, all we need to do is basically initiate the JavaScript library. So, inside of our footer, what we're going to do is put in this code and invoke the plugin. So we want script, and then make some room for it there, and we want dollars dot backstretch, and then inside of here we want to put down the path to our image. So we go images slash and then we'll just rename this quickly so I can take the name to our index dot jpg then we save that excellent now if we, if we refresh the page, if we do refresh the page we should see the image inside and it should work as the background. There we go. Now you can see the JavaScript library has gotten our image and then measured out our viewing space and popped the background in there. You also notice that if we resize the page, you'll notice it also resizes the image automatically. So it's very handy. Excellent. <clears throat> In order to get a slideshow working, on the other hand, we will need to modify our code a little bit. But first, we need to add a few more images to our image folders. So first, let's add another image to our folder. Let's go to here, and go back to the pictures. Bin. And I have another image here of a field with a bird in it. We're going to take that, <coughs> go back to our sites, big BG, images and pop it in there. Now, we're going to need to modify our code in order to get it working. So, now we're going to want to delete the script tags we made earlier before in the index file and insert a new script which will tell our plugin to initiate a slideshow as the background. So, we're going to start by removing everything inside of this script. And then we want dollars dot backstretch. And then we have our brackets, put a semicolon at the end. And now we want square brackets inside of that. And we will open it up to give us some room. Now inside of here, we're going to want to put each one. So let's go like this images slash, we'll go for the first one and rename and copy this Boom. and then we want to put a comma after it and then our new one images slash and we'll click on this guy here copy the name 
and pop it in there. Excellent. Now we're going to need to add a little bit onto the end after the square brackets. So we'll put a comma in here and a space. And now we want two curly brackets for a hash. And we'll say duration will be equal to 3000 milliseconds. That basically means it will it'll hold the same image there for three seconds. And then we'll make it fade, because I like fades, over 750 milliseconds into the next picture. Excellent. So we'll save that. And then, so this new script will take our, our two images and fade through them at a duration of 3000 milliseconds. So let's refresh the page to have a look. You see it fades in. And then we give a little bit, and you can see it will continue to fade through them. Now you can obviously make these times a little longer to make it a little bit less, um, in a, you know, in instructive, uh, a little bit, yeah, to make it a little bit easier. <laughs> All right, so this is a relatively easy and straightforward way for you to begin using and creating large background websites for your projects. As you practice you will be sure to learn some great ways to couple these techniques with your content for the site. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial, and if you are interested in learning more about design and web design, please take the time to check out our website at designtab.me. Thank you, and see you next time.